Marcel the Shell. Wait, it's Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Isn't that the Yeah, the Marcel title? the Shell with yeah, Marcel the Shell with his shoes on. Okay. All right, but let's let's get into this. It's A20, it's an A24 stop motion animated movie about a shell that is alive and thinking and this cute little shell and it lives this exi- existence in this house where a couple lived and this couple used to argue all the time. And then they left and the place became an Airbnb and this documentary filmmaker moves in and discovers this little alive shell with his grandmother who's in, in ill health. And he begins to document Marcel the shell, just interviewing the shell, like his daily life. What does he do? Well, here's how he gets the, the fruit from the tree is he connects a rope to the blender and then turns on the blender. He rides around in this little he sort of, goes inside of a tennis tennis ball ball and rolls around. And it's just his sort of mundane daily life, but it's so fascinating. The animation is done in a really cool style where um, it's stop motion animated, but it's in this sort of real environment. You can tell it's shot with XLR cameras. And it looks, I mean, it looks, and it feels like, part of it feels like a foreign film a little bit, but what happens is, so what happens in in it, and I'm going to just tell about the first half of the story, most of this is in the trailer, is that Marcel is interviewed by this doc filmmaker who ups, uploads the videos, and then he becomes like this internet sensation. Like, he's doing these videos, they get like 10 million views, to the point where people are coming to the house to take pictures of the Marcel the Shell house. He becomes like this internet celebrity. Come to find out that it's like he's lonely because he just wants to find his family. And he ends up getting interviewed by 60 Minutes which makes him, of course, he's a little cautious about, which makes him even more famous. And this fame, he hopes, will lead to helping him find his family. It's delightful. It's fun. It's there. I can't tell you how many times the audience I was with went, (laughs) oh, so, you know, so it's very cute. Uh, and it's it's also very existential. There's something about it that feels mm-hmm. kind of weird. Like the character, the the uh, Marcel's voice is done by Jenny Slate, and I've always loved her as an actress. You know, she stars in a lot of indie comedies, a lot of small indie comedies, and she's great as this character. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's weird to like have like so many movies on on the show where we like all of them. Uh, this is going to be one of those rare instances because I know we're going to we're going to talk about the black phone and everyone already knows that I like that one. But Marcel the Shell is just it's just such a great, you know, and it's this is the movie. Also, I'm trying to think there's actually nothing really in it that it's I will say this. This is not a movie made for kids, but it's a movie kids would enjoy. It's also mm, absolutely. under 90 minutes. Right. Unlike Lightyear, which will, will you know, getting it's close to two hours so it's under 90 minutes it's also a movie adults will not be bored at it's the kind of movie pixar might have made years ago i think they're incapable of making a movie but like this i didn't think about it this way until just because i saw it with an audience of all adults but i'm thinking like holy crap like kids will love this movie kids will love this movie because it's so it's such a simple message but also there's something about it like about our current culture and um narcissism and internet culture and you know getting likes and views that that is mm-hmm. it's just sort of beneath the surface it's not a it's not a huge part but it's there but cannot yeah. recommend this movie and what's interesting is this came from a series of videos that were actually uploaded to youtube in 2010 so these original videos we're done in 2010 and just took off. And then mm-hmm. now you've got 12 years later, the movie, uh, yeah. I love it. Strongly recommend it. Whether you see it on streaming, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm sure it'll be coming to streaming soon, but it's in theaters this weekend. Mm-hmm. Alan, what were your thoughts on Marcel, the shell? Yeah, this movie is too damn cute for its own good. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's weird that we talk about it. Like we just talked about Beavis and Butthead where, uh, you know, uh, we liked it because it was poking fun at the current times. This right. one, I think, will have the same criticism in the sense that it's overly positive. I mean, it's got a great message, and it's not sappy positive either. It's just positive in nature. The thing that makes Marcel so endearing is the fact that he is 
probably in your early teens, age-wise, maybe a little bit lower than that. And uh, he speaks his mind. Uh, he there's he suffers no fools. He just and he sees the world at such an optimistic level. And and even even after the fact that his family had been taken away because uh, the couple moved moved out and they were you know him and his grandmother were left behind. And just the interactions with the documentarian, uh, why you know he wonders why he constantly has a camera on him and why he constantly wants him to talk. Um, and uh, and then all the interaction with his grandmother, who's played by Isabella Rossellini, is priceless. And um, you know, and yeah, I'll admit it, I, I teared up at the end, at the very end, and it's not the scene you think it is either. And uh, so again, this is just a movie of positivity. It's it's funny. You're gonna, you know, this is just a movie that's a brush of fresh air, a, a breath of fresh air, uh, from the from the current crop of movies we get. You know, you mentioned Lightyear. Yeah, this is way better than Lightyear. It, it, it's yeah, it's way better than Lightyear. It's it's like just positive message. It's like remaining having a positive attitude. You know, in light mm -hmm. of you know the world or your circumstances yeah. whatever they are and marcel the shell just sort of goes with the flow of everything yeah. in life and it's well, what's, it's well, okay. I was gonna say, what's interesting no. about it is his his world is this airbnb the world that he knows exists in this little building and a little bit outside of it and then when he's taken out in a car to experience the rest of the world um you know that's just you know again eye opening uh, it's it just you know brilliant commentary from from jen slate it's, I would say it's also somewhat existential, right? It makes you think mm -hmm. about absolutely life and how you approach problems. And Marcel the Shell just approaches problems with this positivity of, oh, I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. And like he's this little tiny one inch tall shell. So how does he get from the table to this? <laughs> and oh, I'll just figure it out. Oh, I'll just go and move and go over here. And this is what I do. And it's like this just sort of positive on his circumstances. And it just, uh, I don't know. So it just makes you think about. Like yeah, maybe we should just look look at look at problems like a puzzle. It's yeah. just something to solve, and that's the way Marcel looks at everything. It's just like this little I'm going to solve this yeah. puzzle effectively. Um, you know, like the weird way that he shakes the fruit from the tree, or or just yeah. any sort of problem. You know, a little problem, or just dealing with a dog, and just like it's I don't know. It's just it's yeah. I, I really loved it. It's it's super positive movie. Yeah. Let's get to some quick mm -hmm. comments. See if people comments about this. Toxic Waltz N8. I can't see Marcel where I live, where where I'm <laughs> because a uh, Top Gun and Jurassic World are taking up too many screens. I actually believe oh. that Marcel the Shell is only currently in New York and Los Angeles, but will be opening wider. So yeah. so there you go. Um, uh, Flaccid Phoenix says Chris's Marcel voice is unsettling. You mean this voice, the <laughs> Marcel the Shell voice? kind of unsettling goober says uh when he sells out for the sequel he can be marcel marcel the shill says goober oh that's great uh hail film threat always great reviews says sarcasticus thank you for that hey uh it's another a24 movie says patrick lemire i like i will say this i like a24 from the standpoint of their taste is very eclectic they don't yeah. choose normal mainstream whatever it is if it's a movie like x which is a horror film, you know, set in the seventies. Uh, they just have really great mm. eclectic taste. I mean, you know, I, I think a lot of it is it's basically your low budget Warner brothers brand, right? I mean, a 24 is a division of Warner brothers, but they just, they, I, I don't know. They've got really good taste. When you, when you see that a 24 logo, they did everything everywhere all at once, which is arguably yeah. the better, that is the better multiverse movie. You know, I, it is it was, the better multiverse movie. It is the better, better multiverse. If if you're if you're going for multiverse movies, and in a way, actually, Beavis and Butthead is kind of a multiverse movie. Now that I think about it, you know, uh, there's a multiverse. I, I think it's more time travel. Well, time, time travel, travel, but also no time travel, but also multiverse because there are other versions. There's smart oh, Beavis right. and smart Butthead, which is a well, the a, Watcher, a, <laughs> Watcher Beavis and Watcher Butthead. Yeah, Rotten Tanuki says, oh, my God, I just saw the trailer for Marcel. Thank you. Thank you for the recommendation. Yeah. Uh, the movie is fantastic. You just, I mean, and also in the theater, you know, we get so distracted. I am guilty of this. Mm -hmm. Watching a movie at home, and I'm like, ugh, it's slow. What's going on on Instagram? I know. I've done it. I've done it. Have any of you my done My phone just it? went off. Yeah. yeah, my phone just went off. Well, I guess I'll check it, you know, while I'm watching this 
movie. And I know if a movie does that, it's not holding my attention. And that's actually what I prefer about the theatrical experiences. It's going to hold my attention. So uh, Rotten Tanuki, happy to help here. Uh, Solomon Thornton, A24 is stepping their, stepping up their game. Would you consider them a no-woke company? Uh, I, when you look at the stuff that they put out, I mean, I mean, but also like, it, I, you know, like, I, I don't think that their stuff is necessarily woke. I, you know, it just, it's just refreshing. It's just not what the mainstream is putting out. So it's, it's hard to tell. I think some of their stuff could yeah. be categorized like that, but. I don't know. See, I, I categorize I categorize woke versus liberalism as intention. You know, like I think woke companies intentionally try yes. to force a message down your throat versus a liberal filmmaker who just makes a movie about something they believe in and are passionate about. Oh, sweet. Uh, here we go. Andrew Eterno says, "Oh, sweet! I was hoping Marcel the show would be good. It's not playing in my city, but it will be. It's going to open wider. Yeah. So." Uh, there you yeah, go. I oh, think wow. it'll do really well. I think it'll do really well in LA and New York, and I think that'll get it in its national release. Well, it's again, they're not selling it like a movie for kids, which it's not. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, yes, it's a movie that like work. I think it works on both levels. You could take a kid to this; they're going to like it probably better than Lightyear, because Lightyear mm-hmm. just the aspects of it seem very cliche. Patrick Lemire, A twenty four reminds me of four A D records except film. First of all, Patrick Lemire, great because I remember 4AD <laughs> Records used to buy those in the nine in the 80s and 90s, and mostly on cassette because I could listen in my car. So there you go. And Solomon Thornton says you already sold me on stop motion, stop an- motion animation. Remember the old school Thunderbird show? Yes, I do. Of course, I remember that show. So yeah, I think there you go. the animation is very much like Robot Chicken, but with live people in it. <laughs> 